Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses from Vincent Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with some more Godly Encouragement for you. This week we are continuing our series on love and all week long we are going to be um, putting practical application to our lessons from last week. So we are starting out our week with God's love for us. God's love for us and the practical application of that. We could never get right to come to God. It's not possible to get right until we come to him. I always used to think that I was too dirty to be a Christian and to have any type of relationship with God. Then I learned that every Christian was just the same as I was. Not a single one of us is clean enough to have a relationship with a holy God. Jesus didn't die for perfect people, though, or people that were good enough. The Bible says that he died for the world. He died for us while we were yet in our sin. He didn't come to save those that had it all together. He came to save the lost. We all need a Savior. We were all created to have a relationship with God, not for religion. Religion is man's attempt to try and earn salvation. It's man's failed attempt to make God in our image, to try to earn his acceptance. The sad thing is that most Christians aren't even aware that they are already accepted by confessing with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in their hearts that God raised him from the dead. It's putting our faith in that truth that saves us, not our works. The good works that we do are only an outward display of an inward conversion. I want to say that again. The good works that we do are only an outward display of an inward conversion. These good works increase throughout the course of the rest of our lives through a process. We do them because we're saved, not in order to be saved. This is God's great equalizer. This way, not a single one of us can claim that we're better or more spiritual than another born-again believer. Let me say that again. This way, not a single one of us, me included, and I've said ouch on this one myself, not a single one of us can claim that we're better or more spiritual than another born-again believer. We all have been given the same tools. So there's no opportunity for a single one of us to boast in ourselves, only in him. Our scriptures, I will get to our scriptures in a minute. God's love for us is so powerful. So powerful. He loved us so much that he created us and put us into a perfect environment, Eden. With him, we got to walk in the coolness of the, the, the Bible says, God walked with them and talked with them in the cool of the day. In Eden. That was his will. Eden was God's will for us. But in order for him to have us have an opportunity to choose him because it is no choice it's no choice if there is no other thing to choose right you know i've heard it said well if god was so loving why did he put the tree in the garden anyways and tell them not to eat from it because he didn't want puppets and robots he wanted children and just like you teach your children okay this is okay you know i don't want you to touch this God did the same thing with us. Why does that make him wrong? Just like any other parent gives instruction to their children about, you know, okay, this is not yours to touch, but I'm going to trust you around it. I just don't want you to touch it. That's not an unloving parent, right? You're teaching them discipline. You're teaching them obedience. You're teaching them respect and honor through doing that you're teaching them responsibility 
but God gets a bad rap for putting the tree in the garden. If he didn't put that tree in the garden, there would have been no choice. There would have been no other choice than to serve him and to follow him. That's not love. That's force. That's like manipulation. That's control. That's dominance. That's not free choice. But God has given us the most powerful thing in the world, and that is the ability to choose. And he had to put that tree there in order for us to have something to choose from. But he put us in that perfect existence, and he walked with us. We had everything was perfect at that point because sin hadn't entered the earth yet. But we believed the lies of, of Satan. We believed his lies as mankind, when I say we. That God was trying to hold out on us. The Bible says, Satan said, God knows that if you eat from this tree, you'll be like him, knowing the difference between good and evil. So really, he just doesn't want, he's holding out on you and doesn't want you to be like him. When they had perfection. Eden means pleasure. They were in the place of pleasure. God put them in the place of pleasure. That was where he placed them. In a perfect existence. And they were eternal until, you know, God said, don't eat of this tree lest you surely die. And they said, well, uh, you know, um, it, Satan said, well, you're not going to surely die. Your eyes will be open like him. And they fell for the okie doke. And I'm not hating on them because any one of us probably would have too. At some point. But then they did surely die. Just not physically. They died spiritually. They, they began to know the difference between good and evil. They could know love. But they could also know hate. They had this whole new... Their, their physical bodies began to deteriorate now. Because... They allowed that into the earth. And they had a sinful nature. They began to have a sinful nature. And that, since they are the mother and father of us all, God created them first and all of us come through them. We all inherited that sinful nature. But in God's abundant love, he sent Jesus to die for us. He knew that we were going to do that. He didn't plan for that to happen. That wasn't his will that they fall, but he knew in his foresight what they would choose because God is omniscient, which means he knows everything. So he knew in foresight what they would choose. And so he put a redemption plan in place before he even put them in the garden. Jesus. the author and finisher of our faith. He loved us so much that even when we didn't listen to him, time and time and time and time and time again as mankind, mankind has not listened to God, and that is our problem. That's why God's love isn't gleaming right now in the earth as bright as it should be. Because we don't want to do things God's way. We want to do things our way. We want to do things the way of the world, which is Satan's system. Because it's our, in our carnal nature. And our carnal nature will always lead. Our carnal, sinful nature will always lead unless we feed our spirit. And allow our spirit man to be stronger than our carnal, our recreated spirit. Not just, you know, if you're not born again, this doesn't apply to you, unfortunately. But it can, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. 
and then you are a new creation. Your spirit is recreated immediately and becomes a carbon copy of Jesus. We are in Christ. It's our flesh where we war with these, you know, the residue of sin. Sin has been removed in our spirit completely. It's in our flesh, which in our, I mean, in our um, soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, where we deal with the residue of that sin and where we have to uh, contend with that. Whatever we feed will lead. We feed our spirit the Word of God, a steady diet of the Word of God, prayer, presence of God through worship. Then our spirit will become more of the leader than our flesh. But we have to pick up our cross daily, deny ourselves in order to do that. We have to be intentional about what we feed. If we feed our carnality, we will see more carnal nature, more sinful nature. If we feed our spirit, we will see a greater measure of us walking in our recreated spirit, which is a carbon copy of Jesus's. It is so important to do that. So important. Because Jesus died too horrific of a death for us not to. His love was, his love and his blood was shed on that cross for us. And he paid too great a cost to leave any of it. To leave any of it. Anything that has been made available to us. We need to be going after everything that is in our covenant with God. Because Jesus paid too big of a price. It's like going to a nice restaurant. You pay for somebody's filet mignon and they pick at it. They don't even eat it. They chew it up and spit it out or they just pick at the plate and, you know, decide, well, I'll take this and, you know, I'll take a bite of this and they leave it there and then it just goes in the garbage. Nowhere in, in you know, comparison comparable, but at least it's an illustration that is worth noting. God's love for us is so great, but we have to receive it. And we are going to go to our scriptures for today, which is John three sixteen in the New King James Version says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8 in the New King James Version says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 1 Peter 1, 18-21 in the New King James Version says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Once again, that was 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 in the New King James Version, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from which or from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Jeremiah 31 chapter, uh, verse 3. 
And the New King James Version says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. All of the scriptures will be listed below in the description box. 1 John 4, 16 through 19 in the New King James Version says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. First John chapter 4, 9 through 11 in the New King James Version says, In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Romans 8.37 in the New King James Version says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God loves us. His love for us is so amazing. None of us can comprehend with our finite minds the infinite love of God it's just immense God doesn't love us based on our performance he loves us because he created us because we're his children Does a natural, a parent in the natural, uh, usually, does a parent in the natural, um, when their kid is acting up or doing something that they don't really want them to do, do they stop loving them? No. They might be irritated with them. But they don't stop loving them. They still love them unconditionally. How much more does our Father love us? unconditionally, truly unconditionally, a purer love than anyone else in this world can give us. God's love for us is vast and unsearchable. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior yet, if you have not been born again, born of a new nature, a heavenly nature, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that you're going to stop sinning. It does mean that the power of sin has lost its hold on you. And it no longer has dominion over you. You still have to work those things out in your soul. Though. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. But none of them. The root has been cut off. The fruit might still be there, but the root has been cut off. God has removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. The blood of Jesus cleanses all sin and removes it. It removes the power of sin over our life. Where the sin still residue of the sin still remains is within our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And that, our soul, our mind is renewed, needs to be renewed daily with God's word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we get a deep revelation of his love every time we do read the Bible. And if you don't understand it, hang in there. Ask God to explain it to you. He's the best teacher there is, I promise you. Now, I didn't even know how to send an email 12 years ago. I didn't even know how to write an email. I didn't know how to use email. I didn't know how to use an app 12 years ago. God is the best teacher there ever is, there ever was, ever will be again. And he knows exactly how to teach us in our individual learning styles. Because he loves us so much. But we have to receive it. 
So if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do, as I said earlier, all you got to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you're saved. That's it. Faith in that. That's what saves you. The blood of Jesus and our faith partnering with what's already been made available. Trusting. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can trust God, take God at his word. He can't lie. It's impossible. And he loves us so deeply that he's the only one that can be trusted fully. Because even when man, humans, you know, do their best, even then, and they have the best intentions, even then things can go wrong, you know, and you can get let down. And even that's not their intention, but the only perfect person to ever walk this earth thus far, and until he returns, the only one that will ever walk this earth is Jesus. And we get to know him. We get to, it said, the Bible says, those who seek me will find me. And they seek me with all their heart. And they seek for me with all their heart. We have an opportunity to know him. Not just religion, but an actual relationship to where you can know God better than you know anyone else. And he knows you way better because he created us. You ever want to know how to fix something in you? Go to the one who created you. Go to the one that knows the effects that sin has had on you. He can see the internal things that we can't. And he loves us so much. And his thoughts about us, the Bible says his thoughts about us outnumber the sand on the seashore. That's for each and every one of us. His thoughts about us outnumber the sand. That's pretty amazing. He loves us so much and watches over us so carefully that all of the hairs on our head are numbered. Not counted. He knows this is, you know, 5,433, you know. And he knows when it falls out and he knows when another one grows in. That's how well he knows us. That's how much he loves us you got to know that you got to know it in order to receive it but he loves each and every one of us yes the person that get on, gets on your nerves he loves them just as much as he loves you yes the person that is in adultery he loves them yes the person that is dealing with identity um dysphoria and you know uh not uh and and you know has same-sex attraction um or whatever yes he loves them just as much as he loves us his love is vast but it has to be received. And unfortunately, we don't get to tell him the parameters. We don't get to tell him the boundaries. He set them in place. But when we follow them, when we follow him, we can walk in the measure of the love that he has for us more powerfully than you can imagine. Love y'all. See you tomorrow.